All right, so today's call, I have a water fountain. Um, it's got a condenser with the compressor. And uh, the complaint is that the water's coming out hot. It's coming out 82 degrees. And uh, this is a very popular shipping company. We all know these guys are in the warehouse and uh, there's no air conditioning. So the water's coming out hot and they're miserable. Uh, so this is the call complaint. And I'm also going to replace this water filter. Uh, so we can start taking this thing apart. I've already come to diagnose it previously. There's about three or four screws on each side. So I'm just going to pop these off and get it situated. All right. So the ambient temperature in the building, in the warehouse, is actually hotter than it is outside. Um, so for today, we have a 75 degree ambient temperature, according to Google. And it definitely feels warmer here. It's 82 degrees. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking the initial water coming out and I'm going to take a temperature just to uh, show you guys the complaint and the problem. And, uh, you know, when you're a human being drinking hot water, it's definitely a problem. So these guys are going to pay to have it fixed. So it's 82 in the building um, and the temperature of the water is about 83 the water line sits on the wall so it's definitely hotter in the warehouse all right so once you get the screws off the top plate will be stuck by uh, these push tab water lines uh, the uh, all you got to do is is press the tab the or depress whatever and uh, pull the the nozzle out um, so you can I mean, it's a good idea to shut off the water before working on this, but the uh, the water won't leak out if you pull it out because you got to press it. You got to press the the button that everybody pushes to drink from the water fountain in order for it to go through this valve. So once you get that side up, um, this is basically a sink. So you have the water inlet coming in, and then you're gonna have a drain. On the other side, you can disconnect it from that area, but you can see. Um, uh, down below uh, so the water falls down into that uh, flex drain so this is where I disconnected it from last time I'm just gonna unscrew it here and pull it out and um, once you get that you should be able to take off the top part all right once you pry it out you should see the uh, top sink part I call it the sink uh, just coming out try not to lose any uh, fittings for the plumbing, uh, just set it aside, and then once you get inside, you'll see the compressor, the condenser, and the um, the drain line, and that drain line is in your way of the cold control, which is below the drain. And that cold control is basically a thermostat, and uh, has two wires going to it, which sends power in and out to the compressor, uh, the condenser. So that thermostat has a little sensing bulb and it goes into the compressor area uh, before messing with anything uh, you can see that's plugged in it's not turned on and so we're going to go ahead and unplug it so we don't die and uh, we're going to pull out the wires from the thermostat which is a cold control also known as cold control um, so i previously diagnosed this already so I already know that the cold control is bad, but we're going to go ahead and show you. So always, whenever you diagnose something, especially like small electronics, um, in your Vito bag, you got to have a jumper. And to jump these controls, this is a spade connector. It's male on both ends. So the two females are down there going to the cold control you're basically just gonna jump the cold control and uh, this is gonna send power directly to the compressor <clears throat> so it so in my case the controls bad it's not it's just cutting powers there's no power going to the compressor so you want to get your amp meter ready so you can see the compressor start up um, and the compressor running amps so have your meter ready put it on amps and 
So as soon as you plug this in, you're going to see the condenser fan come on and uh, the compressor may come on initially. So there it is. You saw the fan come on. Now you can take your amp meter, get your wires out of the way. Take your amp meter and you it's kind of difficult because of how low it is and how much slack the wire doesn't allow you to have but you got to take your amp meter and kind of grab it uh grip it around the uh the jumper or any of the the main power wires so last time i was pulling about four amps uh today it's about three amps which is good um or i may be confused the the lock rotor amps maybe like 4.5 or something like that anyways the compressor is running and uh, the condenser is running and the water is getting cold so I have the new part here and I'm going to uh, this is a special order part I couldn't find it at any parts house even though it's just a thermostat and um, the temperature on this thermostat was uh, uh, the online specs was 36 degrees to 55 degrees so um, yeah basically I'm just gonna insert it and the old one has the sensing bulb going into the compressor area into like a uh, like a copper line so so yeah I'm just gonna I'm not gonna pull the old one out I'm just gonna leave it in there so this is what I've gotten I put the uh, the new control in and I, I pulled out the the old sensing bulb area, the sensing bulb part, and I just kind of measured. I thought it would wrap around something, but it's, it's just a straight line. And it goes straight into a copper tube. And I bend it where, I bended it where, uh, basically where it went all the way down the length. So what I've done so far is just installed the new control and I uh, manipulated the same size that way I can get it down into that copper tube and down to where it previously was. And uh, it's not a big diff, can't get it all the way down, but you know, the better placement, the better uh, performance you're gonna get. So that's about as far as it goes here. And pretty much the rest of this uh, probe uh, has, it's like probably nitrogen filled, so you don't wanna crimp it or pinch it or else you're gonna, you're gonna break the control and you're gonna be right back to square one. Um, so you want to situate that where it's going to stay for, for you know, the rest of its life for a long time. Um, just kind of out of your way. Won't get in your way and nobody could touch it. Um, so I got the control down here and I'm not going to pull out the old one because you would have to take apart all the panels. Uh, the left panel around all the screws from the bottom and then take off the right panel, the front panel just to get to those screws so I'm just gonna mount this one plus there's no area right here to adjust the thermostat so I'm just gonna mount this one into uh, the metal panel with one self tapper right up front so before you mount it you know you want to plug it in make sure the controls working and it kicks on the compressor all right, so side note on this thermostat, it's just like any other small appliance thermostat. Uh, right now from the factory, it's set it all the way cold, and that's the way I'm going to leave it, but you can adjust it. All right, so before I mounted this, I tried to use a self-tapper, but the stainless steel was very stubborn, so uh, I had to basically get a titanium bit, make, uh, drill a good size so I can drill just one screw into that uh, thermostat. So here it is, it's all situated. Here's the sensing bulb where the probe goes and uh, it's unplugged. So I got the wires disconnected and I, I situated, I secured the, the thermostat with one screw so it kind of swivels. You can see it swiveling around. Um, just make sure no electrical connections can touch anything. And um, so I'm just gonna connect the wires and you know, test the operation, make sure it's turning off and on. Let 
there you go. Uh, it doesn't matter which way the wires go, it's just going to send a signal across. So it doesn't matter if you get them back um, one or the other. So let's plug it in. Condenser came on. Control's working. So everything looks good. Uh, as far as the old control, I'm leaving it in there because I don't want to bother taking it out. And the bulb, um, I'm just going to fold it up, put it away, or snip it off. I ended up just snipping it off. All right, so you can see here, we're gonna we're ready to test the water. So this thing cycled. Uh, I pulled off a piece of the insulation so I could see the suction line sweating, and it's nice and cold. Uh, so the ambient temperature in the building is still 82. Um, we're gonna hit this with my my hip so I can open the water. And uh, I did open the water valve. And so this condenser is cycled for about a minute and a half minute 45 seconds and it did that a couple times already so it's a really small reservoir that it's cooling and um, that's I guess the amount they judge that people will drink so um, you can see the difference in the uh, the control sending the signal to get the compressor running to cool that water so check that out check out that temperature drop from 80 to 63 within seconds. Still going. Uh, I think it reaches something like 57 degrees. So big difference in the water. These people are going to be very happy. So yeah, it's good to go. I'm calling this one done. Suction line sweating. Um, this machine is all good to go. So I'm going to wrap it all up, change the water filter, and I put everything back together and call it a day. All right, so there's me replacing the water filter. It only had one carbon filter to replace. After you do that, you just wanna check for leaks and uh, purge the lines from the filter so these people can drink it and um, ensure that the water is not overshooting or undershooting and adjust properly if they have a water regulator. But other than that, the water's coming out 53 57 degrees and um, these people were very happy and this machine's good to go thanks for watching